Welcome to the Jira Life, the place to find news, events, and interviews with the Atlassian community's movers and shakers. Join our hosts, Alex, Dr. Jira Ortiz, and Rodney, the Jira Guy Nissen, as well as the Jira Migos in the peanut gallery, as we sit down and discuss the latest going on in the Atlassian ecosystem. Because we didn't choose the Jira Life, the Jira Life chose us. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So, um, <clears throat> Alex, what's the over under on the Atlassian um, changing their end of life date? It's. it's I think you have some new evidence for us. It's going to get pushed out. But before we get into the news, let's remind the audience here. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're so close to our goal of 500 subscribers. Also, we have an amazing guest, Dave Ross, which we're going to get into in just a minute. We'll introduce him. And, uh, yeah, we're going to kick things off by talking about a couple of uh, interesting news that came out from Atlassian. And, Dave, feel free to jump in if if you're comfortable or curious or just want to stir the pot a little bit. Um, we're, we're, we're going to jump in and start talking about, um, this server end of life. So in case you've been living under a rock, hopefully you have Again, just a reminder to the audience, if you're watching right now, put your hidden talent into the chat. If you're willing to share that with us and let us know what you're good at. We want to see that chat explode with what people are great at. Your superpower, your skill, that one thing that makes you unique Ma- yep. master breakfast taco maker <laughs> i don't know dave we're <laughs> i'm mexican so i'm gonna have to give you a run for your money i mean <laughs> taco is in my dna <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh yeah so <clears throat> again don't forget to subscribe and we're gonna jump into <laughs> our very first item here as the fun is coming in through the chat flute player extraordinaire uh, yeah, Bob has no near photographic memory. I still think that Bob should be automatically disqualified from quiz whiz and any kind of game shows that require any kind of memory. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, as his partner, I would have to vehemently disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't say that I have any skills. Um, if anything, I'm an avid hoarder, and that's probably a skill. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's collection. You call it I'm hoarding, I call it collecting. I'm an organized collector is what I am. Um, but I do have a fairly extensive Apple collection. As <laughs> come, people have come to, to hear. The Jira uh, X is, seems to be very popular. I don't know how that happened. I like this, though. The Jira Whisper. <laughs> I love it. Better claim that domain. <laughs> I know. You definitely got to claim that one. Andy's got a perfectly formatted Excel documents. Wow. That's a skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. PowerPoint engineering is another skill that I've heard other people throw out there. Not for me. I personally don't, but I know some people definitely have an engineering degree in uh, PowerPoint engineering. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody, for sharing. Um, hopefully, again, we try to make these a little bit fun at the beginning of each episode. And um, if you're watching the replay, we want to know your special skills as well. We definitely like reading those comments later on. Now, yep. today's topic, because we want to give Dave as much time as possible Jira mm-hmm. server, end of life. It's coming. And again, if unless you've been living under a rock, then you probably know that this is coming. And I was just talking to a team today that is still on Jira server. And I had a little gasp moment, <laughs> especially since they, their plan to get off of Jira server is not 45 days from now. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, this is coming up. We've been watching it for, what, four years now, three years now? slowly took down and it is finally on the horizon um allegedly allegedly <laughs> now um dave um i think we explained this a little bit beforehand but for the audience sake um alex has a prediction a prediction i think is wrong but i'm going to let him share it because i don't want to give it enough credence to actually give it voice i predict that in true microsoft fashion atlassian is going to pull a windows 7 windows xp windows 98 uh fiasco which is where you make this big old noise big old announcement that you're going to end the life and then like six months later it finally happens like i don't think they're gonna this date is gonna lock like i think it's gonna 
uh, slight on them. But th that's my hot take. I, I just I don't see them being ready, especially when I talk to members in the community, talk about why people are not ready for this February date. There's just so many variables, so many unknowns, and so many new vulnerabilities. I would feel a lot more comfortable about the date if we didn't experience all of October, November, December hit us with just a swarm of vulnerabilities and CVEs that I don't think Atlassian is going to look good if they just leave their customers in the dark. I mean, I made this point, and I got the number of days left wrong, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, my point here with this post I made was, look, you don't – let's say you don't do anything. You just stay on server and say – End of life comes and we still run to run it. What happens? What happens is to Alex's point, we have all these um, CSVs come out. Um, sorry, everybody wants to talk to me today. Um, we got all these CSVs come out. They have all these um, security bulletins and the hackers have all they need because data centers share so much code with server. Hackers have everything they need to hack your server instance. I so. just think they're making like a honeypot, Dave, right? Like here's a deadline where we know it's looming and we know that after this day at lasting will no longer patch, yeah. will no longer do any updates. It's just like, and we know that so many people love and use Jura yeah. and it's just, mm -hmm. it's too easy. It's going to be too easy. I feel like they're going to have to push that date out. I, I'm just surprised that like, because I seem to recall like three, four years ago when they announced end of life for server. I thought it, that like the date had come and gone and I had just missed it. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> you gave a little deja vu there. You're yeah. like, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, no, spoilers. It's been slipping for four years. So what's yeah. another week? What's another two weeks? It reminds me of a time uh, when, when Tesla announced the Model 3. They announced it like on an April Fool's Day, like in 2016. But the actual car itself didn't get delivered until like 17, 2018. And I remember I drove for like an hour to my nearest location where they had it on display. And this lady pushed me out of the way so she can get into it. And I was like, I've waited for like 700 days. I can wait another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we're going to have a moment like that. Yeah. But anyway. That being uh, said. Yeah, go ahead. Um. Server E of uh, into life. I think it impacts one of us, Alex, more than the other. It doesn't impact me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cloud or bust, baby. Cloud or bust. Yep. Um, Dave, hopefully Miro is not mm. on server. <laughs> uh, no, no, def definitely not on server. But um, we support servers, uh, but not for much longer, I think. And... <laughs> Um, it's a little bit trickier of an integration. So yeah, I'm I'm on Team Cloud along with you, Alex, for sure. Cloud or bust, baby. Cloud or bust. All right. Yeah. So in other news, Atlassian, I think they broke my heart. But I knew it was coming. <laughs> yep. Whiteboards are officially coming out of beta. Yeah. And we all knew it was coming, right? We knew they were in beta. And so they made it easy. They made it, you know, something that was fun and interactive and and Dave, I don't know how you feel about this because the mm -hmm. whiteboards is a, I would see it as a competition to, to sure. Miro, right? Yeah. But I think Atlassian is really handicapping themselves here. I think they're still really, they're not taking this very serious. And I think Miro is definitely in a position to swoop in and because Atlassian puts their cards out and it's a really great way to, from a market perspective, go, hey, look, here's what you get if you come over here. <laughs> but for everybody else, uh, because they're officially out of beta, that means cha-ching for Atlassian. And what we're going to get is if you're on the free, whoa, scroll up on me, why don't you? <laughs> if you're on the free one, and we're going to be limited to three active whiteboards per user. Does that mean that they can create three or does that mean they can participate in three? That is a question. That is a, <laughs> the first question that popped up to me. Um, Jira integration is still going to be there, uh, but some features are going to go only to premium enterprise, which at least I'm thankful that you at least get the whiteboard still because unlike automation, where the automation for Confluence is only premium enterprise, I think Atlassian at least gets us a little favor here. Um, that's I don't think that's right. I'm like, I get it. It's a free plan. You do probably don't have too many people on anyways. I could get those restrictions. Standard. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. <laughs> yeah. 
Whiskey Tango yeah, Foxtrot. Yeah, I would have bumped it up. I would have bumped it up a little bit more, or I would have done something differently. But yeah, no, this is definitely gonna hurt people on stand. I I don't think at Lasting wants standard anymore. I think they're gonna want to have their super limited free, and everybody on premium. I I think they're just going into a two two tier model here. Yeah. So you think the next thing to be EOL is um, the standard plan? <laughs> you heard it here first. Alex said it, not me. Prediction. I should have put that on my 2024 predictions. Can I do an addendum to my video? We'll you do a retrospective around June. I'll even join if you want me to. Mid-year review. We'll do a mid-year review. We'll do a post-team uh, retrospective from my prediction. I think that, that'd be interesting. But yeah, definitely standard. So, But anyways, uh, again, we all knew this was coming. I, I didn't think it was going to be feasible. Um, it sucks that Atlassian kind of gives you the functionality and then they're like, just kidding. Um, but it's it's definitely changing, and at least it's coming out of beta. I'm hoping that at, from this point forward, though, things only get better for us as far as capabilities and um, functionalities. But while that happens, I think there's an excellent segue to transition over to talk to about our lovely guest here. Because if the whiteboard phenomenon here is not your jam, Dave Ross may have some really good, excellent news for you. Dave, why don't <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and, and tell us who you are, what you do, and why you're here? Yeah, for sure. So thanks, Alex and, and Rodney, both for having me here. Uh, longtime lurker um, but, and happy to be on the show today. Um, I'm, I'm Dave Ross. I'm, I've got a weird title. It's the Agile Product Evangelist at Miro, which means I go around telling people the good news about uh, what they can do from an Agile perspective to support Agile ways of working using Miro. Um, and I spend time talking to guys like you, Rodney and Alex, um, and a lot of our customers as well, um, to see how they are using or not using Miro um, sort of in the agile world. I come from a long background. I was a scrum master years and years and years ago. Um, <laughs> yep, that's right. Only person excited about the, the whiteboard limits. It's funny, when Atlassian came out, with uh, their own uh, competitor to Slack. And, and I remember that story. I, I can't even, because I implemented it way back in the day. And um, when they <laughs> end of life to that and said, we give up, we're, we're going to go with Slack instead, um, that, that I'm seeing deja vu again, I think, going on here. You're on mute, Alex. I was gonna say we don't talk about hip chat inside of the, in this podcast. There you go. No, too, it's a, too it's many an feelings. Too many feelings. It's an unmentionable product here, Dave. Uh oh, too many too many hurt feelings. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, everybody. I take it back. I take it back. Um, no, no, no. Continue. Yeah, but that's that's kind of like um, you know the the whiteboarding world and and actually at Mira we really don't consider ourselves much of a whiteboard anymore. Um, like we're more of a collaboration innovation workspace. That's kind of how we we like to describe ourselves. Um, there's plenty of whiteboards out there. So Atlassian, welcome to the party. Um, it's it's a fun space to be in, but uh, you need to evolve and you need to kind of layer on more and more. Um, you can't just be a simple whiteboard. Um, you know, even Google got out of that business. So Dude, uh, Google's getting out of every business this week. <laughs> <laughs> Google's getting out of every business every week. I, they so, have so a whole they, side I, for stuff that Google's gotten out of business of. Right. So Dave, I used to work at the Boeing company and um, yep. I used to be responsible for the Team Foundation server or, or the old version of ADO. Yep. And um, I remember my senior manager pulling me into an off her, uh, her office one time. I was going to get on a call with Microsoft from a vendor. And she's like, whatever you do, you're not allowed to say that you like, that you endorse, that you care for the Microsoft technology in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so I'm so glad I don't work there anymore because let me tell you how much I love Miro. <laughs> it's one of my favorite tools in the whole wide world. So I'm really, really excited to see this demonstration and cool. to get a little bit more into details because what you showed me mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago or a few, a few weeks ago now, like I'm just so excited for the rest of the world to see this because yeah. this more yeah. people need to know about what you're going to show us today. Awesome. Yeah, um, thanks. Thanks. To thanks Alex's story, um, my previous company, we also we lived and died by Miro. Every wow. we used that more than we use Confluence, wow. uh, at least on our team. So, um, yeah. Um, I thanks for those ringing endorsements. I don't know what to say. I'm <laughs> blushing a little bit actually. <laughs> well, 
No, so, like so we, we love to so, hear stories about that. We love to hear stories like that. So, so thank you both for, um, for singing yeah. our high praises. Cause, cause you know, I, I think that I'm a big fan of Miro as well. I'm a fan of Jira and I've been a fan of Jira for a long time. Um, I work for Miro now and um, being able to talk about both in the same breath um, is kind of like a dream come true for me because I think that there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do in Miro um, that's complementary to what you can or cannot do in Jira. So, right. So why don't you take us through a, a, a demo and, and and let's let the floor is yours. So take us take. Awesome. All right, I will. <laughs> so yeah, for sure. So. MSK. Wait, hold up, hold up. Hot take though. Where do you think you are in the spectrum, Miro versus Microsoft Paint? <laughs> Miro's on the far <laughs> side of that spectrum. What are you talking about, man? If 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 you grew up poor like we did, you learn how to get very creative with Microsoft Paint. <laughs> oh, trust me. I I'm with you there, Alex, but uh, Miro is so far and above Microsoft know, Paint. It, it's an even comparable. Yeah. You tell Lena, I'm pretty sure Lena would try to recreate Miro capabilities inside my uh, MS Paint still. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Sorry, Dave. There's a lot of interruptions, especially as you're coming in through the comments. Oh, I don't know if we told you during the pregame here, but as yeah. the questions pop up, let us know. I don't know that you can select them, but let us know. We'll highlight them for you, and we can address them and, and, and answer them. Yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind, um, yeah, highlighting them for me so I can look at one screen and not the other, that would help me yep. out. Cool. Yep. All right. Perfect. So yeah, Jira and Miro integration and where to use them. That's what I'm going to talk about today. So um, if you're a Jira fan and you're watching today, um, chances are you might actually also use Miro uh, in the company that you work at. Um, it's very common to have both tools, um, but not everybody is fully aware that you can really marry the two in, in some really interesting ways. Um, and so I'm actually going to talk about a couple, well, three different ways that you can do it. And the first one that I'm going to show you today is what's called our Jira card integration. Um, and what that does is it allows you to pull data from Jira into Miro. And it also allows you to update that information in Miro and it will sync back to Jira. Um, so if you've used the, the Jira, the, there was an older Jira integration or what they called the Jira connector for Miro in the past. That was unidirectional. You could only pull data from Jira and, and put a Jira card into Miro. And, and if you made any changes or anything, it wouldn't sync back. Those days are gone. Um, as of around the middle of last year, we invested a lot of time and effort um, into making it a two-way synchronization. And that unlocks a lot of really cool uh, potential. So one thing that you can do, um, you know, it's, and it's, it's very easy to, uh, to set up. So I've got some resources over here that, um, you know, we can, we can share with you later about if you're a JIRA admin and you want to get in and you want to actually set this up. Um, it's fairly easy to do from the cloud, again, which is why I'm on Team Cloud. Um, if you have server or data center, there's a few more hoops you have to jump through because of, you know, proxies and firewalls and SSO and all that good stuff. But um, cloud is very easy to, to, to do. Um, and so once you've set that up, um, what you will see over here in the uh, app menu on the sidebar here in Miro, if you type in Jira, sorry, Jira card, you'll get this, this little pop-up. And this pop-up basically is allows you to select a bunch of Jira issues to pull in to Miro. So I'm just gonna pick the top uh, four here, and I'm gonna add these four. And let me just pull them over here to the side. And right now, these are just, these are Jira cards. That's what they look like. Um, you can see here, they've got the, you know, the issue, issue uh, key, they've got a status. You can actually go into the Jira um, card app and you can configure the cards to show whatever, um, I've got a very short, uh, list of fields, but if you have a longer list of fields that you um, want to display on these cards, you can select these here with these little toggle switches, um, and then that information will propagate up here on the card. So um, it's just a really good way, an easy way of getting that information um, into into Miro. Um, so a couple it, questions, Dave. Real yeah, quick. sure. <laughs> One, I love yep. how you the the whole Jira plus Miro equals something. <laughs> I love the theming. Yep. Um, uh, I thought that was appropriate. <laughs> cool. Uh, two, um, the fields are, how flexible is that with custom fields? 
Um, it's very flexible. So if you've got custom fields out there, you can put them on. Um, they will show up in that list. There are a few smaller limitations that I'm aware of, like uh, the tags field, for example, you wouldn't be able to display on cards just because that's sort of like a multi-value field. Multi okay. Yeah. Okay. So and there's then, a few of them out there that you can't, but if it's a custom field, it should appear in that list. Um, and and then can... the million, the million dollar question, um, yep. I can bring them in. I can bring these issues in because I'm in a project and I have access to these projects. But if we're co-collaborating on a board, mm -hmm. would another non-licensed user to Jira be able to see the issues? So they could see the card as it is right now, um, and but they, the they data. Yeah, like they would be able okay. to see this information, just like the card um, as it is. But what they can't do is they wouldn't be able to open the card and do any of this on the side because they don't have a license for Jira. But they can move things around within the mirror UI. They can add lines to it yes. in between well, uh, and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. See, well, this, they, is, this is pretty good. I, I like that. Yeah. Like, careful. They can add lines, but it's these kinds of lines. They're Right, right. Yeah. Not dependencies, which maybe we'll talk about later. Yeah. It's not like dependencies, but you could definitely draw a line. That's, that's standard Miro functionality. So they would be able to do that. But what they can't do is um, update any of the information on the card and have it sync back to Jira because obviously they don't have a license for it. Okay. But they could, like if you're doing some sort of like a big room planning, help yep. move cards around and say, no, this one needs to be over here or this is a part over here. Because sometimes like stakeholders, like your executives, your VPs, right? Yeah. They they have an opinion, <laughs> but they just don't always have a license to go into Jira and, and do the changes themselves. Yeah. So, and the only caveat to that is if it's a if it's a card like this that's kind of like freestanding, it's not on what's called the Jira Planner, which is basically the um, and I'll show that in a minute. The Jira Planner is um, is is a Kanban or a Scrum board pulled from Jira. Um, they wouldn't be able to move the card back and forth on there because you're basically updating the status of that card mm -hmm. on that planner board, which would then sync back to Jira. So that's so again really real time then at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But let me show let me show you yeah, one I'm more thing and, I'm and, and I'll jump to the planner board. Um, yeah, and if it'll be easier for you, if you can want to take a break every couple statements. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, no so problem. I can, so, so I can interject my questions. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So you saw one way that I brought in a bunch of cards all at once, um, but you can it's it's very simple too. What I did is I copied the URL for um, for an issue in in my instance of Jira. And I'm pasting it, and I pasted the URL, and Miro has the intelligence to basically find that card and display it as a card, not as the URL link. So that's just another way. If you've got like a, a you know a few tabs open and you're like, I just want these three, Jira card, and find it, um, you can just copy the URLs and paste them over, and Miro will display them. Cool. Um, couple other things that I can show you here on the Jira card side. Um, number three here, which is bulk convert sticky notes and native Miro cards into Jira cards. So this is really cool. Well, I like that because that's one of my favorite features of the Confluence whiteboards that as you're, as you're brainstorming, because sometimes Jira is not at the forefront of what you're doing, right? You're just right. making ideas. You're <clears throat> thinking things through with your team. Yep. And all of a sudden you're like, crap, now I got to go recreate all this. <laughs> Right. Now I've got 16 stories to create with all the associated subtasks, yes. which we're going to leave that topic alone, Alex. <laughs> yes. Yes. I I, I have deep-seated trauma from my days as a Scrum Master having to be able to do that. So it's not that hard uh, in Miro. So what I'm doing is I'm just highlighting, here's here's a user story map this thing that, that teams sometimes do to break down work, and they're going to do it kind of on the fly. I've come up with story one A, B, C, and D, and, I, and I'm like, okay, now I want to convert these into Jira cards. And what you do is you just click on the side here, and you can pick, oh, I think these should all be stories. These are kind of a medium priority. Um, I want to you know, have an assignee, a reporter. You can fill in the fields. You can even say, I want it to go into certain sprints based on the project. Uh, and so that it ends up in the right sprint. Um, and then you mm -hmm. could even point it and size it here if, if you wanted to. And then all you do is hit the convert button and Miro will think and boom, 
These are now official JIRA stories. And if you don't believe me, I will take you over to JIRA and here's story 1A. There it is. Now, how so quick you, is that bi-directionality then? Like if you do an update in JIRA, will it reflect? Like if I went into JIRA, change the assignee real quick, like would it show immediately or, or is there a lag? There, there can be a lag. Um, there's nothing in Miro that would really trigger a lag. It's kind of, a lot of it has to do with sort of network latency and, uh, and, and some other things, usually on the customer side. Um, but what they do offer you the opportunity to do, first of all, you can just refresh the screen, which refreshes mm -hmm. and does a new pull. If you suspect that there's information that's not updating, and it's entirely possible if you've got, you know, 100 people on a Miro board and they're all updating JIRA cards at the same time, that there could be a lag just because of the load. So what you could do is, you know, just refresh your screen. Um, when we look at the JIRA planner, there's also a way to refresh the JIRA planner and that does a fresh pull as well. So you can manually trigger it if you if you don't think it's updating in real time. But most of the time I found like 80 to 90 percent of the time, it, it, it's pretty much instant. So and by the way, Dave, the, so at this point, two, two more followers and you're going to hit a world record here of hitting our most most guests <laughs> per session here. Cool. Um, so quick question. The QA, you've got my QA brain going. That's how I started in tech. Yep. How many stories could you bulk convert in one go before mm -hmm. either Miro or Jira starts to have Complain. real problems? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever tested the upper limit. I've had, I have I know that I personally have bulk converted 200 sticky notes into stories. Um, I wouldn't want to go much higher than that. Um, and and the reason being is because, well, for a lot of reasons, but they're, they would all be converted into the same issue type. They would all be converted into the same project. So chances are that you are going to do them in batches anyway, right? Yeah. You're going to say, I have a group of epics over here. I'm going to convert these epics into this project. And then I'm going to convert these stories over into this uh, project. And they're going to go into these sprints. So chances are you're not going to ever do like a huge bulk change like that. You could, but you probably wouldn't. Does that answer your question, Rodney? It does. And while, yes, you shouldn't and you probably want it, yep. every company I've known that one guy <laughs> who will find an excuse to push it. Yes. Yes. Well, they'll just be sitting there for a while watching a spinner, I think. Um, <laughs> and then they'll learn their lesson not to do that again. Uh, that being said, 200, um, Bob said it, 200 yeah. is not a bad number. Um, yeah. I'll take that number any day. If you're yeah, doing much more than that, around. you um, yeah. need to reevaluate your process. <laughs> yeah. And your size of your teams too. Yeah, it always blows my mind when the like Jira has a limit of like five thousand issues on a board, yeah. and I've hit teams that hit the limit of five thousand issues on a board, and I'm like, wow, how? like, like, <laughs> like, it makes no sense. No, the OCD in me would not allow that. I would be cleaning up that board. Um, You're boiling you know. the ocean every day, man. Divide up those teams. Make more scrum teams. That team is too big if they're trying to do five thousand tasks at once. <laughs> Exactly. And I'm not even the scrum master in this group. Right. <laughs> That's you too. <laughs> yeah, that would be a big no-no. I would have been hiding that stuff, um, sweeping it under the carpet, and no one would ever miss them. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, let's talk about the next one, which is Jira Planner, which I've mentioned a couple of times. And this is kind which, of... You need a license in this, right? This is... You need you need yes. to be pay to play on both sides. Yes. Yes, you do. So you do need a license if you're going to use the planner board. Um, and the planner board is, so there's no integration here. It's a, it's a native app within Miro. Um, and I'll click on it here. You can see my, probably hard to see on the screen, but my cursor now is like a little uh, planner board square. And mm -hmm. what I do is I click anywhere on the screen and it gives me a nice empty planner board here. And you could select Jira um, and, and by the way, you could select multiple instances of Jira. If you, for cloud, we can support multiple instances. So if you've got more than one and you want to pick which instance, you can do that. And then here you would just pick a, a board. So I'm going to say from the PTO team, uh, I want to see their board. Can you do multiple boards at a time? Uh, not at a time, but like I could, here, let me just copy and paste this. 
down here. Now I've got you two. You can concurrently plan two boards at a time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I could okay. do another, another one. Um, let's call this the performance team. And they could pull, you could pull their board and it'll okay, come Yeah. That's what, yeah. I, I could see that being helpful. Yep. And then here you would determine what, what kind of columns do you want to see? Do you want to see a, the sprint layout? So here you can see the backlog. There you go. And it pulls all of the, all of the JIRA cards that are currently in that backlog for that board. Um, and then the, the sprints, and then you can say, well, wait, we're missing sprint three and I want to see sprint. No, nah, I don't want to see sprint four. I don't care. And to be honest, I really don't want to see the backlog because that's too much. Let's see sprint. There we go. Nice and clean. And then you can add swim lanes. Um, you can say the status priority fixed version components. The only thing that you currently can't do is add epics, which a lot of people do. I know when they're organizing their board, they want to have a swim lane per epic. That is coming out later this month. I was going to say, because that's, that's a feature that you do natively in Jira, so it's weird. Yeah. I would have expected that one to be there. Well, it, this has been an, uh, an iterative release for Planner Board, so we've, we've kind of gone with the high... Um, value ones and the easier ones. There's something about the Epic because of the, um, it has to do with the relationship and it's changing as you know, um, as <laughs> well, is, right? It is causing a lot All of the headache. time. Yes. Yeah. So it's no longer the Jira link, but you're getting a parent link. And now we have to be able to differentiate a parent link from an Epic and not any other issue type. So that's, yeah. so that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of tricky because I've, I have spoken to Atlassian recently and they're just saying like, it's just parent. It's just parent, and, and Jira will know <laughs> which parent it is based on the issue type right. and based on the hierarchy. So definitely uh, a change that I'm happy at last is finally rolling out after like two years. Yeah. But you're not alone. I, I've been working with Aha, and Aha's freaking out as well because they're like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, like our development team is, has been well aware of it for a while. So like it's, it's baked in there, but that's the reason it's not here today. It's because we have to kind of take that change. You got to refactor that up, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, what about for teams that are like Safe? <laughs> Bob's gonna hit hit me from the chat. Good thing he's not here anymore. Uh, but like for safe teams, right? That are kind of like, yeah. Because I, I work with a lot of teams that are like half half safe, half agile, half waterfall, half a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like, is there? Uh, can we maybe create epics outside and mm -hmm. group the whole thing by an epic? Like, is there some creative ways to get around it? Um, or, or think bigger picture or or maybe yeah, do like, like so, multiple boards, multiple epics or multiple teams. Yeah, like you could create, so you can create any board you want within JIRA, right? Because a board is just a view into the underlying issues contained within that project. So you could pull, you could make a board that just has, ep, you know, um, epics on it. We also have a filter here that you can do it by issue type. So if I only wanted to see epics on this board, I could. There's many, many different ways that you could slice and dice it and get it get it with a view to the way that you want it. Um, just depends whether or not you do it on a board or you do it as standalone. Because, you know, one way that if I go back over here to my example and I pull up, you know, the JIRA card, JIRA card. There's, oh, by the way, feature requests, any shortcuts to just hit like Command J and pull up a JIRA card? <laughs> You're reading my mind because I've actually asked for that too. Yeah, um, I was like, but the number of times you've gone to that little button and looked up Jira cards, I would have thought you had a command in there for just yeah, a shortcut. Yeah, issue type equals. Mirror product teams, if you're listening, <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do to Atlassian all the time. We're like, Atlassian, if you're listening, this would yeah. be a cool feature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, oops, I got a syntax error here. There we go. So, issue type equals epic. I want to pull out these epics. Uh, actually, these ones too. You can try um, to pick the ones you want. Yeah, you can pick the ones you want, and then here you go. Like I'm pulling all of these. These are all the epics that I want to see, um, and they're standalone. And and now you can group them any way you want. Um, you can even put them on a planner board, but then keep in mind once you do that, you're syncing it to that project, and you're mm -hmm. syncing it over into that sprint or wherever it is. So it just depends really how how you want to deal with it. So theoretically, what if I wanted to grab that one story from earlier and say, okay, this epic is going to need this story that's right there on your right-hand side, yeah. that one, yeah. How can we link those together? Is it possible? So there's, <clears throat> so we offer what's called dependency linking, which um, uses the issue linking functionality in JIRA and leverages it. Um, so we, like, what I can't do is, um, 
you know, highlight these two issues, like take the epic and this story and say, make this story a um, child, a child of this particular epic. That I can't. Mira, if, you're, if Mira, if you're listening, feature request. There you two. go. Because <laughs> that, that, that to me would be super valuable, right? Because yep. maybe, like, I don't know, teams work in so many different ways, right? But I see teams that are top up, the top down, bottom up, where like maybe you're working off a bunch of stories and you're like, okay, I want to group all these to an epic. Yep. And so it'd be great to like click your 10, 15 stories and go, you are mm-hmm. now the child of this sticky that is now an epic sticky. Yeah. Right, because it's like very quick in the fly, context yeah. preserved, yeah. right? And, and that would be cool. I think that because again of the change from Epic Link to Parent Link, that that's something that we are looking at in the for the future. It's just not we're not able to implement that today because the Parent Link change just, hasn't come. Hasn't yeah. come but what you can do today, and that's what I that's the third thing that I wanted to show is the dependency app which leverages issue linking functionality in JIRA. So, you know, if you go into JIRA, you have this um, linked issue is blocked by, you know, section within um, within that issue. So um, what we use in Miro is a way to visualize that and map it using lines. And I've got a little demonstration of that down here. So here's four separate teams four separate boards. These are planner boards that we've pulled into JIRA um, and that we've cleaned them up. And uh, we now have access to what's called the dependency app. It's up here at the top of the of the Miro uh, UI and it says dependencies. You click on that and it'll run for a second. And this is actually close to your question, uh, Bob, about showing dependencies between epics visually. It's this. So Basically, it will map out all of those issue links and say this blocks CHRT number two, which in turn blocks over these two stories over here. Um, There's different ways of sort of visualizing all of this spaghetti mess. You can see I've got a few other JIRA cards on the board that are pulling from, um, from, from the other ones that I have on the other side. But this is a way of visualizing in like a program board for an art, a way of seeing all of the dependencies between epics and between um, you know, stories. And it, and it works for any kind of dependency type. It could be blocks, um, it could be any, any one of them. Um, the nice thing about the dependency app too is that it, uh, you can turn it off. So if this is too noisy for you, I'm going to turn it off and just say, show me on selection what that looks like. So, okay, the noise is gone, but I click on this card and now it shows me, oh, okay, cleanly, I can see these two stories um, are blocked by this one. Same with this one. He blocks three others. This one down here will block a few others. Oh, and it's got another relationship over here. Uh, It's a duplicate. So it's, it's a very good, easy way to kind of visualize the relationships between issue types. And it can be any issue type. If you have multiple issue types within your instance of JIRA, epics, stories, um, and you know ob- ob- initiatives, objectives, any of those, as long as it's an issue type and as long as you create an issue link uh, relationship with another issue type, it will show up. Um, yes, you can customize which dependencies you want to see. So you, if you just wanted, if I didn't want to see the duplicates, I just turn that one off and that line will no longer show up. So me... uh, what other different views do you have? Because I I love this view because it reminds me to my glory days of PI planning and actually yep. putting yarn in between the <laughs> stickies uh, physically in the room. So yep. it takes me back 10 years. Um, yep. But is there a way to like visually see like the lineage of, of how like the cause and effect downstream? Yeah, sure. So, but, but before I go there, let me show you one last thing and then I'll jump to another part of the board, which shows that a little bit easier. So I know issue linking, setting up issue linking um, relationships in JIRA is, is a bit of a pain in the butt. It's oh, yeah. much easier to do it in Miro. So let's say I wanted to create uh, a dependency relationship between uh this card here, which I'm gonna highlight, and this card down here, which I'm also gonna highlight. And then I click new. And so this one, which is PTO6, which is up here, blocks 
uh, perf, perf six, which is this one. And I'm gonna save it as a draft. So right now that draft is a dotted line. What this means is I've created a relationship in Miro, but I have not yet synced it back to Jira. So when you're doing PI planning, you're doing a lot of negotiating and moving things around and, and pointing out dependencies and things like that. You wanna do that in draft mode. And then when you're ready to sync it back to Jira, all you have to do is go back to where it is in the list. It would be down here at the bottom. I'm gonna click on it and now I'm gonna say save to Jira. And now that dotted line is now solid. And if you click into either one of these Jira issues and Jira cards, let me go up there and show it to you. You can now see it's blocked by PTO6. So it's now synced back to Jira. So that's the one place where the, the two-way syncing is uh, under control, it's within your control. You can decide to sync it back to Jira or not. So this is really, really interesting. And a couple of things that come to mind one, you owe, did you show me the thing I asked you? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Because I forgot. Because I forgot. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Start there. Sorry, I'm like Dory from Finding Nemo, man. I forget after <laughs> two seconds. I got a half a second attention span. That's okay. I, I can show you what you asked for. Do you want to see it? Yeah, please. Okay, cool. So I've built here um, a hierarchy. And it's basically, it's a hierarchy of... Um, of JIRA issue types, starting with an objective, which then goes down to the initiative, which goes down to the epic, which then goes down to story. This is very common in a lot of companies that I've worked in, for example, where they're trying to have traceability and transparency between here's our high level uh, strategic objectives. And these are like the three to five year horizon of where the company's going. We break those down further into initiatives, which are maybe like a year or two in duration. Um, which then get broken down even more granularly into epics, which is kind of like the program level. This is tactically what we're going to work on for the next six months to a year. And then the, the actual stories, which are you know, much shorter duration, right? So what you can do in Miro, which is difficult to do in Jira, is you can build a um, hierarchy like this and then create um, the, uh, the issue link uh, relationships between them and then when I turn on the dependency app, you will see all of the relationships that come between all of these items or all of these issue types uh, on the board. There you go. So you can see the flow very easily. From the top level strategy, I can see that, oh, look, it's these three initiatives that flow up to that strategic objective. And then further downstream, you see which epics flow up to the initiatives and what user stories then are connected to the epics. So getting back to that original comment about, you know, can you show relationships between epics and, and user stories? You can, but it has to be an, an issue link type relationship. Um, I'm gonna pause there for a second. Alex, did that kind of answer your question from before? Yeah, yes, but now it opens up new ones. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because like, I love this, right? So, so Jira is a great agile tool. Yep. Most companies graduate from Agile about two weeks into their journey into Jira. Yep. But SAFE is so much more complex right. that teams usually land somewhere in between. Right. Right. And I just love that you can do this. So um, my first question is, and it goes back to the whole Epic thing, right? So I'm assuming that you're also going to respect is not the right term, yep. but I'm going to use it. Like you're going to respect the hierarchy, right? So if you have an initiative, that happens to be the parent of an epic. Mm -hmm. With those, is that something that Miro is working on to see the whole stack, the whole hierarchy? So, it, it, it you can build this like this is completely custom. This view that I built, this isn't like a planner board that I pulled out of somewhere and just plopped on the board. <laughs> I built this, um, which meant that I brought individual cards over. And then I linked them individually using the issue linking functionality in Miro because it's easy. It's three clicks and you're done. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, it is possible that we may look at respecting the parent relationship functionality that's coming um, coming in Jira. We're not there yet. I don't. I don't yeah. want to promise anything to anybody. <laughs> but that's something Miro, that we need. you're listening. <laughs> yeah, but that's something that I think would simplify this even further. 
because really, if you set up those parent and relationships in JIRA and we're able to reflect them um, another way within Miro without the dependency app, because that would be separate, then you know it would be win-win, yeah. be very easy. Because I don't see a lot of teams planning like that. Like when they're planning and they're, they are doing the dependencies, mm -hmm. yes, there's dependencies between this team's epics and another team's epic. That is very, very crucial to understand and to have full visibility into. Yep. But most of the time people are looking at like, here's my epic. What's all the work that I need to do for this mean, team? And yeah. so that's that's where I'm like, it's very critical to have both the, that away and that away. <laughs> yeah. So you could create a board that way. Like if you wrote a JQL query as the foundation for a board and said, show me the epic with all of its child um, uh, child issues, then and then pull that board in using the planner app that I just showed you, you would get that. I see, yeah, because it is possible. There's that uh, issues in portfolio issue or issue in portfolio child issues of, and then you put the that initiative and it'll show you every every yep. child downstream. So that would right. be a, an interesting workaround. Um, yeah. The other thing that I'm thinking, right, because so Jira advanced roadmap, not sure how much, how familiar you are with this, because the closest yeah. thing we get to what you showed us yeah. is in that Jira advanced roadmap, right? right? But one thing that I'm not seeing that you mm -hmm. haven't touched, talked on or touched on yeah. Is there any road mapping calendar view in all of this that lets you kind of see when things are going to be due? Um, so there's no, we, ha we don't have a road mapping app. What we have are a whole bunch of road mapping templates that mm -hmm. you, that you can, can then overlay. That you can overlay. And then you can put your JIRA cards using that template and kind of slot them into the, to the road map wherever they fit. Um, so yeah, we, we can do that. And it, it's actually a little bit more customizable. Like I was on a call with a customer a couple of days ago and he, he was uh, on the product team. He was, a, I think, a director over in the product org, but he had built out a, a Miro board, which showed his roadmap from, for six months. And it had all of the cards on it and it had them slotted in per sprint. And he had created that all by hand. Like he had built that entire view and he said that's what kept him sane. That's that was his 360 view of everything going on within the, his product in a single place. Um, but he had to build it manually. It wasn't like a magic board that you <laughs> pull yeah. out a Miro and you plop somewhere. He he built it all sort of uh, using Jira cards one by one. This is really cool. I think it's really interesting and again very beneficial because. The the problems that I typically see, right, is when you're in these planning meetings, when you're in these like high level strategy meetings, yeah. I find that a lot of people don't know what they're talking about, right? <laughs> right. I find that a lot of people hide behind the complexity of like, if mm -hmm. I just speak really, really fast or say some really, really big words or say some important stuff, like right. I'll sound super important, right? Right. And then, and then what happens a PI later is like, well, you missed everything because like everybody was just like, yeah, that sounds great. That that's a solid plan. Yeah. But this takes yeah. that subjectivity and makes it really visual. Yeah. So then everybody walks out of this meeting, yeah. in this with the same vision, right, and the same understanding of like, well, this is what we're gonna what what we're committing to. This is what we're gonna build. Right. Like I I was a TPM. Um, for a few years, and I had you know 14 teams under you know in my in my program. Um, I wish I had something like this. I could have built something like this that would have helped me visualize the um, the the relationships between teams. Yes, but also how everything flowed upwards, so that I could see which epics were um, you know under control, which epics are at risk, and where I needed to follow up, and who I needed to talk to, which teams. I needed to talk to. So if you're like a, a TPM, if you're an RTE, if you're a portfolio manager, if you're if you're those people who has to be in the detail all the time and have an understanding of where everything sits. Yeah, for and every ball that's in the air. <laughs> for every ball that's in the air, this is the view that's going to save you. Because you need to have some kind of artifact to keep all of that straight. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I like that you're not duplicating the data, right? Because you're pulling the Jira issue directly because that's yeah. the other problem. So I've, I've done this in PowerPoint, <laughs> yeah. but I then have to, because I was articulating the whole plan, but then I would have to go back into Jira and recreate everything. 
Yes. Which would be a huge pain. It was a huge pain. It was my, literally my full time job was like come up with the plan, spend the next seven hours putting the plan into action, <laughs> only for the plan to change the next day. <laughs> I know. I know. It's super painful. And that that was my world too. Like it, I it was a it was spreadsheets, and you know there, there I had cobbled together some sort of system to kind of tr- uh, track everything, but um, like this is a one stop shop. And again, yeah. you customize it to, to for the information that you need. It, to, if you don't care about what's going on for other teams and you don't care about what's going on for other strategic initiatives, don't put it on here. Yeah. Um, so, so I know we're coming down here in the last 10 minutes. Do you have anything else you want to show? Because I do have one last question. But if you got something else, I want we want to make sure we get to the rest of your questions here. Uh, no, go for it. I want, I'd love so, to hear your So question. my question, um, the colors, right? Any way to color or just add colors to those cards or distinguish blocked items yep. versus not blocked items and stuff like that yeah so that's that's what i did here with the red so if you see here if you click on this card you can see there's a, a you can choose the fill color and you can choose to fill the card background or not and so let's say the reason these are red is because they're in the uh, in the at risk column at risk, yeah so i colored them red the rest i just left as is but if i wanted to i could color this a lovely shade of green uh, hold on, I didn't the, do the, the fill. Yeah, you just dropped it. Yeah, no, there this is perfect. Yeah, because Jira, the problem with Jira is that it's blue, <laughs> <laughs> right? You right. only see blue, and um, and I yeah. think yeah, it, this gives another dimension for teams to then have yet another layer to articulate thoughts and ideas and strategies and and yeah. blockers and, and stuff like that. So I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Cool. No, thanks. So, thanks. <clears throat> any cool. closing comments? Because we do. We have. We have a. The new segment that that we definitely want to hit here. Okay. <laughs> Matt Dor says, "Oh boy, red and green, just just for the right colors." <laughs> you pick the colors. We got plenty of other colors. You don't like red or green? <laughs> pick what you want. Those are the ones that I've got on this on this board. And, but yeah, Damien says, "Impressive presentation. I wish I was in the cloud." Yeah, yeah, I think this is awesome. Like, um, they said they want to have some patterns as well. Maybe some di- You know, the the way you did the dash one, I think it'd be good to do like a. Like a, a slide, you know, fill in, but not built boldly, but just maybe like pa- partially built to yeah. show like partial partial in progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, that would be cool. No, you guys go ahead with your with your final segment. Yeah, no, no, no. This is all with you. This 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 final segment includes you. It's it's all about you. We we just we want to yeah. get to know who Dave is a little bit better. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. Fire away. So, yeah. So Ronnie, you want to kick it off? Yeah. Um, we're going to be asking you five quick questions. Okay. Um, the idea is to get your initial answer quickly, but then we're going to get some, give you some time to kind of explain your answers if you need it. Yeah. And yes, um, welcome to the quick Quizlet. <laughs> All right. So, Dave, first yep. question: ebook or physical book? Ooh, I'm a physical book guy. Says the guy that's all digital with Miro. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I'm too tactile. I need to touch and turn the pages and have something like substantial to, to carry around. I'm I'm an, a dinosaur, I realize, in this day and age. But I'm okay with that. A modern right. dinosaur at will at that. <laughs> we know we mentioned um, the chat app that shall not be named earlier. But given choice, email or Slack message? Slack, um, although because I I have a system for organizing Slack messages and like tagging myself in the future to remember to respond to this one, so I've got that system down. Email, emails kind of. I, I also do email, but it's for other stuff, and so I much prefer Slack and keeping my brain in Slack over email. I thought I heard you earlier. It was all about hit chat though. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Alex. allowed to say hit chat. The first rule of uh, the Jira life you, is not you to talk broke, about hit chat. You broke the rule first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Yep. Early bird or night owl? I should be an early bird, and I kind of am because I have a four-year-old, but I would sleep in every day um, and stay up late if I could. So when I get retired... <laughs> Um, in a few years, then that will probably be what ends up happening. And I have wake up at 10 o'clock to have brunch. So definitely a night owl if if not forced to work. <laughs> I think that's everyone who's a night owl. <laughs> I'm up at right. 4.30 every morning. I think uh, Bob and I are early birds. Yeah. The next now, 
Next one. This one's going to be interesting. Yep. Scrum, Kanban, or safe? Oh, wow. Safe, as I call it. <laughs> yeah, you're you're pulling out the knives with this one because you you it's so polarizing to pick anything. Um, Let's try not to get you. Oh, fired, we dude. haven't even Let's begun polarizing <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say personally, I'm going to say um, whatever works for the team and whatever the team decides. <laughs> That's but for you, answer. like if, if you how very pick. political because <laughs> <laughs> it's not up to me, it's up to the team. <laughs> all right, that's the round. Um, all right, we'll give it to you on a technicality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> such an agile answer. Yep. All right, last question, and probably the most second polarizing. To second to last. Yeah. Oh, you've got one more, Alex. Yeah, in and out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So second and last away. one is a hot dog a sandwich. Uh, these are just evil questions. They get worse as you go down. You, you kind of lull, <laughs> lull somebody into like a so false sense of security, and then you hit them with a the hot dog question. Um, <laughs> yikes. I'm going to say yes, because it meets the high-level definition uh, of done for a sandwich, which is meat encased within a uh, bread outer shell. So yes. Look at uh, <laughs> look at another agile answer. From <laughs> <laughs> so so um, Dave, to give you the backstory in that one, I'm from Southern California. Yep. And ask any Southern California native what barbecue means, and it's burgers and hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I live in Texas, so no comment. I won't yeah, even address yeah, I that. I know. I, I'm yeah. I, I, I will. So then, Whataburger versus In and Out? Oh, come on. You know the answer. You already yeah, know that. In I don't even have to answer that one. In and Out, right? No. 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 <laughs> no. Not in a million years. Uh, Can I make it something myself as an answer? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then, the final, final question Bucky's thoughts. <laughs> fan or not a fan? <laughs> oh, that one's not fair. Um, Why? <laughs> I am a fan of Bucky's, just not on long weekends. Like, yeah, like, Memorial yeah. Day weekend. Okay, like yeah, no you don't do it on a week. long weekend. Yeah, like don't don't go to the Bucky's on I ten on the way to Houston on a long weekend because like you literally can't walk in there. But no. <laughs> any other time, yes, like Bucky nuts and um, you name it, every kind of. Junk food you need for a road trip is there. So, so much beef jerky. Oh. So ungodly amounts of beef jerky. Pickled quail eggs. Where else are you going to get pickled quail eggs uh, on a road trip? <laughs> Bucky's. <laughs> there you go. I didn't even know that was a thing you can get. It is. All right. So, it so I is. Think we got one minute here to maybe ask a question here. Yep. Um, outside of regular work and yep. outside of your pickled quail eggs, <laughs> uh, what's a side project something that you that you do that just for fun other than taking care of your four-year-old kid <laughs> yeah well they kind of take over your life so um historically what what i really like to do is um i love to kayak so and but i'm a flat water kayaker so i'm not nothing crazy i'm not like going over waterfalls or anything like that there i got the thumbs up from rodney i got a new friend I am too. Um, I am too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Like it's the most peaceful, serene thing you can do. And we've got beautiful rivers here in central Texas. You can go out um, and go, you know, paddle for a couple of hours and forget the world. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. cool. well, I'm not saying we, I'm putting you in the middle of a kayak when you come out this way, Alex, but um, <laughs> you might want to bone up on your swimming. I, I thought you're going to strap me onto the back of a rocket and go full Toy Story. <laughs> No, that's when we visit my hometown. Hometown, all right. All right, so with that said, uh, we are basically out of time. I just wanted to make quick announcements. Uh, there's a couple of ACE quiz, sorry, ACE events happening uh, this week. We got one in Tulsa, January 11th. Is that today? Bob, why are you giving me... Bob, hold up. Stand by, folks. Bob, why don't you tell us about the ACE event happening this week? <laughs> okay, so uh, we are... Uh, just to give a quick shout out for the Atlassian Unleash Agile and DevOps, we are um, looking at uh, this week. Uh, Tulsa is kicking off uh, with an event tonight on January 11th. 
okay. Mumbai, uh, which is technically uh, right now, um, <laughs> uh, or January 12th, uh, they have their um, uh, Atlassian Unleash, uh, you know, um, Agile and DevOps event uh, on the 12th, which is uh, Friday. Uh, for them. And then um, other ones are going to be starting to kick in uh, next week. Toronto on the 16th, Tel Aviv on the 18th, and then on the 19th, um, uh, Kolkata, Bangalore, and um, Shanghai. Wow. One other uh, event that we would probably like to highlight is that uh, Ed Gale is hitting the road to Austin. So uh, Dave, you, you might want to make yourself available for this. This is barbecue and DevOps. I mean, barbecue oh. and Atlassian intelligence. Wow. That sounds fun. Yeah. It's happening fun. at uh, Atlassian HQ, right? In, it'll, in be at, it'll be held at the Atlassian HQ. Cool. So go check them out because I wish I could go. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, no, for and, sure. That's uh that sounds like a good time. Yeah, oh, Ed, Ed, is our, Ed is our resident pit master, so he will not disappoint and most likely will not give you hot dogs. He will not be <laughs> he will not be grilling hot dogs for his no. barbecue. No. Or hamburgers. Or hamburgers. Or hamburgers. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> With that said, thank you very much, Dave, for coming on by. You are welcome here whenever you want, especially uh, when you release those features that I want. Sure. Let me know. <laughs> we'll bring you right back over here. I'll, I'll get um, right on it, guys. I guys, had a blast. You guys Thanks have for a having content me. creators program by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself making a lot of Jira and Miro videos for the community. Yeah, now. we do. Let's talk because we okay. we have a whole influencer program. I'll talk to you offline, but yeah, for cool. sure. Anytime. Awesome. So thanks again, and we're just gonna cue our outro. All I'm right. Because cool. I'm told that I interrupt too much. So yes, everyone. yes, you do. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening to your life. Special thank you to Dave Ross from Miro for joining us today. Um, our hosts are Alex, Dr. Jira Ortiz, who can be found at youtube.com slash 8 tech tech tutorials. That is tech twice. And Rodney, the Jerry Guy Nissen, who can be found at thejerryguy.com. Our producer is Robert King Bob Wen. You can catch us as we record this podcast live every Thursday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on youtube.com slash at the Jira Life. Be sure to join us at the Ether Jer Amigos in the Peanut Gallery each week to ask questions, to add your comments, and tell us what you're up to. Um, if you can't join us live, you can still catch the replay on YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell while you're watching. You can also find this podcast on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you think the podcast serves rating, it would very much help us out, so please do. And remember, we didn't choose the Jer Life. The Jer Life chose us. Thanks for watching.